Michelle Violet here, second generation homeschooling mom of three. I have an eight year old, a five year old and an infant. Today I wanted to take you along as I plan a lesson of building foundations of scientific understanding volume two. So let's get into it. So my planning process for volume one and volume two is pretty similar. We've just finished volume one already. Um, and so we're starting volume two. And I talked a little bit about my planning process in my BFSU review video, but I thought I would give you kind of like a real time <laughs> look at how I plan. So this is mostly going to be me reading and highlighting things because that's just how I do this. But my first step always is to check what lesson is coming next. So this schedule I actually got from the Building Foundations of Scientific Understanding Facebook group. There are so many resources in the files of that group. People have put together all sorts of like lesson plans and activities for different lessons. And so um, a lot of them are for the first volume, then there's some for the second volume, and there are not very many for the third volume, just FYI. But if you're want wanting things to help you get started, there's definitely a ton of resources in there. So this is one of the lesson progressions for volume two. And I liked this one the best because it breaks down not just which lesson, but which part of each lesson. And along with this lesson plan, the person who posted it also posted these kind of outlines of each lesson. I don't use these because I find them too abbreviated. Like if you do use these, you still have to read the actual book. But even when I'm teaching the lesson, this would be too short for me. Um, and what I'm doing right now with highlighting and teaching from the book works really well for us. So I would not change that. But she has these, actually I don't remember who posted it, but whoever posted these has um, these uh, like schedule lesson plans and then an accompanying student workbook for volume one and volume two. I think I saw in one of the comments that the workbook wasn't 100% um, secular. There were like one or two things that were not, but I don't use any of that. So I would check what lesson we're on next. We did lesson one, lesson two, so we're on lesson three, which is A11 part two. I keep the first volume around just in case the lesson that I'm on references it and I need to look back and see what we did. So, all right, let me get started. So here, this is an experiment we need to set up. So I'm gonna highlight it like that, just so I know that that's kind of for me to read and then do. I like to highlight periodically through here just to give me spots for my eye to rest so I don't lose my place when I'm teaching. And so I make sure I don't skip anything. And then I always highlight all the questions. So we did Brownian motion in the previous section. And when we got, when I saw that that section was on Brownian motion, I had to go look up Brownian motion. because It's been a long time since I did chemistry and it's always been the weakest of my science fields. Um, I do have a background in science, but my background is more biology. Um, and then my husband also has a background in science, but he did chemistry and physics, like he taught chemistry and physics. So if I have a question and I can't look it up on my own, I go and ask him and he can help me out. But usually I'm just fine reading from the book and I don't, don't need to go look something up. But volume two is definitely getting into more complex topics than volume one. This is a point that we're supposed to bring to the student's attention. So I'm underlining it instead of highlighting it because I have a lot of highlight highlighting already on this page and it's something that should be apparent through this questioning process, but just so I make sure not to skip it. So the way that they'll, I'll teach these is I will usually read the questions almost word for word from the text, but the answers I paraphrase um, kind of based on how my kids or how my daughter answers the questions. 
So I highlight the questions because they're very, very important for me, but then because I'll have read this the night before, I can just paraphrase. If I forget something, it's right here for me to look at. And then I always highlight whatever conclusions we're supposed to come to. Again, this is mostly just to make sure that I don't skip anything as I'm going through teaching. So here's a spot where I'm going to go look back at the other volume to see what exactly we covered in C1 and C3. And I'm not going to read the whole lesson. I'm just going to look at these materials because they tell us what experiments we did. And then I'm also going to look at these practices because they tell me what the kid was supposed to learn from those lessons. So I'll just check those really quickly. So that when I'm prompting my child to remember what we learned before, I know exactly what I'm supposed to be prompting her for. And obviously I'm not going to prompt her to remember every single point here, just the parts that I feel like tie most strongly into this lesson here. All right, so that's C1, and then we'll look at C3. Okay, so now I'm ready to teach that. It does summarize here what you're, they're supposed to be recalling from the previous lesson, but especially because it's been two years since we've done some of the lessons in the first volume, I still find it helpful to go back and check. But I'll just kind of underline here the main energy things that we're supposed to be talking about. So we'll talk about this more later. I bought this book used. You can see somebody highlighted this question already, but I am going to highlight it again. So here's Brownian motion, which we talked about last lesson. So I will highlight that to make sure that I tie it in fully. And then here's the conclusion we're coming to in that part. So this is something we're going to get to later. I always tell my daughter when it says in the text, oh, we're going to talk about this more later. I let her know that um, because I think it's important for kids to know like we're touching some of the topics now, but we're going to go into more depth later. So here's something I need to Google. So I'm going to highlight that. This I will pull up before the lesson. So I'll do it once I'm done going through the whole lesson. I'll find the images that I want on my computer and have them saved in separate tabs.
So the things that I'm not highlighting, I'm still going to cover them, but I just need to highlight kind of the most important pieces of each lesson so that I can keep moving through the lesson the way I'm supposed to, if that makes sense, so that I don't get lost while I'm teaching. This helps me stay on track, helps me stay organized. Some people do rewrite their lessons. I like having everything all here if I need it. And so this is, that's the end of the lesson. Um, and so I will, once I teach my daughter this lesson, I'll teach her the lesson, we'll do the experiment, teach her the lesson. I'll show her the lung diagram I pulled up on the computer. And then I'll also show her if there are any diffusion pages in this, this is my favorite science encyclopedia. I showed you, I showed inside it in the, like my favorite reference books video. So I'll link that video below, but I'll just look here for, so this is a, this is exactly the experiment we're doing, but this has a breakdown. And so I will have, when, my, when we first started doing Building Foundations of Scientific Understanding, I would read these pages to my daughter because she was still learning to read. Now she can read them on her own. So I will open this and ask her to read it and then she'll ask me if she has any questions, but I find that these help, reading this helps reinforce the lesson that I've just taught. And then once we're done with all of that, I'll read these three to her and she can choose which diffusion notebook page she wants to do. And the way that she usually does these notebook pages are she'll draw a picture on the front and then I'm not gonna show you the back cause she wrote her name on it, but on the back she'll write a little bit about what her picture is showing and then she'll also describe it to me in words. When she was younger, when we first started this program, I would she would tell me about the picture and I would write on the back. Now she writes like a sentence or two or like a little bullet point chart on the back. This, this one was about ad, for the adaptations unit we did. So this is an orchid mantis and so on the back we listed all of the she listed like all the adaptations it has to help it hide i also wanted to show you uh, some of the other resources that i got from the building foundations of scientific understanding facebook group that people have posted for free in the files there are a lot of these little like lap book type activities where you can cut and paste or tape things um and i thought my daughter would find these fun but she hated doing them so <laughs> We did this one and then we didn't really do any more. My kids don't like glue. They they don't like the feeling of stickiness on their hands. It's very dysregulating for them. So that's a no-go. And then all the cutting involved in this, my daughter was like, why can't I just tell you about it? Or why can't I just sort of like, why do I have to make these pockets? This is silly. So she didn't like this. <laughs> the acti sorts of activities that she does like are more of these sorting things, but I have to do all the gluing for her. So this is sorting different kinds of plants into different categories. So she did all the cutting and then she put them all where they go. And then I glued them all down for her. So this, this kind of activity she does like. So I always check the files of the Facebook group to see if there is anything like that that I can print out. Otherwise, we just do this notebook page. Okay, so I talked a lot while I was doing all that planning, but it usually takes me around 10 minutes to do that part of the planning. Um, and then I'll go look on the computer for anything that I need to look on the computer for. And then I also check what books I need to check out. So because we already started this unit, I've already looked through this list and checked out any books that we're interested in. I like to stay two weeks ahead in my library book checking out. That's about how fast my library can get me books usually. So I'm gonna check this list. Um, so the next two, the next a lot of weeks are all A12. So I'm gonna check the book list for A12 and then I will put on hold any books that I'm interested in. And this book list is really short. This book is really long. I'm not gonna read it to my kids right now. So we'll probably just rely on our science encyclopedia for that lesson. So I hope you found that helpful. I will post links to all the books and the Facebook group and everything in the description box below. I am an Amazon affiliate. So if you click on a link and make a purchase, I do receive a small commission. Thank you for watching.